time for the indoor portion of the program. Now that Coach has had the introductions. Time for the indoor portion. John Nelson, Madison Cruz here from Soccer Down Here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for the, the great unveiling today. Where we get to see, I mean, I love the colors. I love the black. I love the black and the pink. I love the two separate jerseys. I love the rollout this year. Once again, thanks to the city of Canton. Thanks to Northside Hospital. And once again, thanks to our friends at Georgia Impact for letting us come and crash here today. So we're going to handle the Q&A portion here indoors for those that want to find out more about Georgia Impact. All right, Coach, if you would. You and I have talked before. We have both coaches. Yes, we do. Well, we, have some, we have two coaches of a multiple number. Yes. So, Maddie, go ahead and kick things off. We believe in chivalry here as a part of the interview. So go ahead, ladies first. All right. Well, I mean, obviously with the success of the last season and going into this one, what has been the mindset for you guys looking ahead into this season and trying to do exactly what you did last season, but a little bit you know, more of a better angle. Here, I'll hand you the microphone. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I think for the coaching staff, our driving force was we had such a fantastic season last season, but the bit that always stuck out for us was we still weren't always recognized. It was, it was almost like it was, oh, they're getting lucky. It's going to stop at some point. And uh, the top 10, top 25 rankings kept coming out, and we weren't there, and we weren't there, and we we lost 1-0 to the champion. We tied the eventual national championship, 1-1, uh, and, yeah, we're getting wins, and we're at the top of the league, and the teams below us are in the top 10, we're not. And, yeah, it was something that kept getting to us. Finally, uh, that, last, um, that last announcement for the top 10, there we were. We, we managed to break into the southeast. So for us going forward, that's... That's the driving force is we want to make sure that we're there from day one. And, uh, and, and and we want to show that. But the conference is is changed. It's going to be very, very competitive. New teams, top, top players from around the country. And so we knew we had to, we couldn't just stay the same. We had to improve. And I believe we've done that. So you, you, you're coming into the season with something to prove. You want to show that, hey, there's a reason we should be in that top 10, top 25. And this is what. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's important that we show that it's not just luck, that you know, we deserve to be there and we're going to continue to be there. And again, adding the professional lead um, you know, to our pyramids, that's the whole point is we're not just here for luck, it's what we mean business. We, you know, we want to go far. Yeah. Well, see, I actually know Christina very well because we did. I was going to say, please explain. Listen, so when the She Believes Cup was here, there was a USA youth um, ooh, a community um, community event that it was with um, AYSO. Right. And basically it was just a fun day in Madonna where we just got the chance to play soccer with everyone in the community. It was great. And that's where we met. And I we met that day and it was a lot of fun. You were a little coach. And we, I was an assistant coach because, Lord, I haven't touched a soccer ball in Lord knows how long. So it was it was, it was a fun day. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was it was one of those things that I was super passionate about being being involved in. Um, the She Believes Cup stands for so much, you know. If she believes, she will, she can. Spring for four days for the, to five different cities throughout Metro Atlanta and bring youth soccer there, and making a lasting impression. It was a free clinic, uh, lasting impressions in the community for people who normally wouldn't be able to play soccer. So it was really fun. That's where I met you. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited, especially with U.S. soccer moving to Atlanta now, um, moving their headquarters down here. There's so many more opportunities that's going to be in. And with us here at Georgia Impact being being the, the semi-pro moving to pro in 25, it's, it's going to be huge. And, and just the community of, of Georgia and professional women's soccer is going to be even bigger now. How has it been getting the chance to see women's soccer really grow and develop as it has throughout the years. But I mean, she believes Cup broke records. Broke records here in Atlanta and being in the epicenter of Atlanta, we are a soccer city. How's it been to see that develop from the women's sports side of it? So I, I mentioned this last year when I first was brought on board with, with Rob and we talked to him is I'm actually an alumni of the WPSL. So I played back at 10, 12 years ago now. And so, to, so to, okay, so Christina, Christina, right? Two Christinas. <laughs> it's a stereo. It's a stereo. Christina sofa is what we're staring at. But, but yeah, so I, I had the opportunity to play with 
opportunity to play and be a part of the WPSL and what it stood for then and to see where it is now and, and how much the communities are investing in it. Like, I played for a team that just was like, oh, yeah, we got the franchise and we're good. Like, that's it. It was just a bunch of college girls coming together and playing for the summer to stay fit. But to see the community involved here is, you know, one of the things that I was super excited about when Rob, Rob invited me last year and then coming back this year, that was part of it is seeing the city of Canton come together and represent women's soccer at this level is, I, I mean, I can't, I, I go back to 15 years ago when I was a 18 year old girl playing high school, getting ready to go to college. I would have never thought this would happen for women's sports today. So, I mean, kudos to Rob and, and the club, kudos to the city of Canton big time for, for doing this. And, you know, I don't speak for Christina, but we, <laughs> Just the, just the part of seeing women's soccer grow and then seeing these girls being a part of it as, as college and youth players and then seeing the youth that's here from, from Georgia Impact in the community and seeing what opportunities are there, it's it's huge. And it's, I mean, it's it's been a long time coming. So how has it been like for you as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have to second Christina's sentiment there because it really is amazing to see how much it's grown and just the support um, going from years ago being a player that it really was just kind of a thrown together thing to it being such an incredible opportunity for these ladies. Um, and it's needed, like, you know, like you mentioned, it's an epicenter, Atlanta is an epicenter of soccer and yet we don't have a women's, we don't have enough women's things going on for soccer. So this, you know, being all the way up here in North Georgia, what an amazing opportunity for so many people to become involved. So I'm grateful, grateful to Rob. I started with the club. I'm one of the goalkeeper coaches for the club. And um, I started back when I moved here from North Carolina back in 2020. And Rob welcomed me with open arms. Like I was really needing a another, you know, opportunity um, for work as well. Um, obviously pandemic and all that was going on and it was crazy. And he, he's been amazing along with all the other coaches. So. This really is, it says more than a club. It really is. It's a family. It's a community. It's an opportunity. It's, it's, it's women. Like it's, it's, it's everybody in it together. So there's just, it's an incredible, incredible thing. I can't say enough amazing things. So let me ask you, what's it been like to see this club go from the first day you walked in the door to where it is now, to where you're having these kinds of events, you're having this kind of a gathering, you're, you're having all of these different elements coming together here and be, be almost a, I don't know if you want to call it like a fulcrum or a center point for what's going on here in North Georgia. What's it been like for you to see the growth of what's been going on? Yeah, it's been a, it's been an incredible journey. So I, I started about 14 years ago, so a long time, and uh, I was just, I was at Reinhardt University playing in college there and I needed some money. You know, I could coach at a local club. I coached recreation. I didn't know what academy select was. I didn't know there was a difference. And I had a, it was like a U11 or U12, U12 girls team. And uh, week to week, I had these girls just disappearing off my team. I'm like, what, <laughs> what's going on here? And then uh, turns out they were, I would ask, you know, with other players, and I'm like, oh, they got, I asked to go and play academy. And I'm like, it's academy. I'm like, well, they should be on my team. We told So I had, to, I had a lot of learning to do when I was here. Got to learn the program, became just a coach in the club, moved up director of coaching. And when I first joined, there was only just about 300 players. Um, we've soon moved to right around 700 now in Academy and Select and about 2000 in the rec program. I mean, it was night and day from where we were. And uh, to see that growth at one has been massive. And all we want to do is continue to offer opportunities for our girls. So for me, as the girls director of coaching, it's what did they want? What did the girls want? And it's, so it was, they want to go to college. So that was the goal. Can we get our girls to college? So it was build those relationships. We've done that. Now the girls in college, they're like, you know, they're crying their eyes out in the last in the last game ever where they ever played for club. They want to come back. So, okay, well, what can we do? All right, let's have the WPSL team. We let the girls come back. They can still wear the logo. It means something to them. And then it was, okay, let's keep going. What else can we offer? Some of them want to go pro. All right, let's go for it. I've got to thank Shane Noor, especially like the backing that he's given this club has been incredible and going pro is no joke. It's 
it's a lot of funding. It's incredibly intimidating, but he was like, don't worry about it. It's numbers. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work as long as we know that that's the goal and that's what's wanted. We'll do it. So, I mean, it's night and day. I, I couldn't have imagined this. And for those that may not know, your accent is not Pickens County. No, uh, Alabama. No. No. Uh, so, let's see. North Alabama, you're like Huntsville. Yeah. You're, you're over there in... Uh, you're hanging out in, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, from Glasgow, Scotland. Born and raised. Yeah. So, so as a Glaswegian. Yeah. G L A S W E G I A N. Glaswegian. There you go. What What's yeah. it been like for you to see the growth of the sport coming from, you know, coming from you know SPFL, where yeah. all the discussion is it's Rangers and Celtic and Aberdeen and Hearts and, and you know Montrose and all this kind of stuff yeah. to come here and see the conversations like we're having where. The Atlanta area is not just the center of it in the southeast, but the center of it on the planet for United States. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's two totally different backgrounds. It's you know, we grew up in Scotland, and it's you're born into that team. It's, you support this, you're in that family. And that's that. And it's what well, everyone loves and breathes. I came over here. You know, I've been coming over here all my life on vacations. When I, I remember, I would come over with my family, and I'd be looking for. You know, soccer clips and different stuff and you can't buy them anywhere you couldn't find a game on the tv or it's, it's world cup finals and you couldn't find that bar that would have it on you know it's a big games and i was so bizarre it was a different life so the fact that i'm in atlanta now and i've seen the growth and all of a sudden no now they've got atlanta a the soccer team and now people follow it and you've seen the growth of that and i mean even back home i mean there's always been girls soccer here but there's never there's never been female soccer back home. There was always, there was one girl in my entire year that played, and she played with the boys, and that was it. That's always been the way up until about four years ago. And then uh, now there's a place for, now there's a place for girls to play and to play. We have an incredible relationship with the club with Rangers, and uh, we have a relationship where the girls that maybe don't break into that first team yet, they're looking to come over here now and play. And likewise, they help what they want us to scout for them throughout the WPSL. So. The relationships, I mean, have been fantastic. So, no, but again, just like you're saying, to see the way soccer's been around here, it's incredible. To see, all, I mean, all these faces right here, that's the youth players, you know, just wearing the WPSL jerseys. So, love them. Do you, is uh, getting up early to watch Old Firm mandatory for part of Georgia Impact? Yeah, I had to add the basement on just so my family couldn't hear me upstairs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a, it's been loud. It's been loud, but yeah, yeah, you got to get I'm up and watch shocked. it. Yeah. <laughs> Celtic and Rangers loud in your household. Well, do you know what as well? I'm the girls director and diehard Rangers. Ross Keenan, our boys director, diehard Celtic. Whoa. It's uh we don't talk for a couple of weeks. So <laughs> Wow. Relationship's good though. Are, 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 there, are there any uh, how do we how do we phrase this? Are there any side discussions uh, when it comes to the matches? Like if one if one side wins, the other guy has to do something else like you know, laundry for yeah. a week or something. There's none of that, but you just get abuse for the week. Yeah, you got it. And then Fernando right here, he's the worst for it because as soon as the Rangers Celtic score comes up, he's the first one to be like, oh, uh, was there a game of the weekend? Oh. FTB's like, what? Yeah. He, there was something going on, man. I don't, it's, it's yeah. He, he drops the grenade and walks out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're the one that takes the water balloon from the back of the room and you're aiming from the back of the sofa and you're making sure that it, yes. <laughs> That's FTP. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Maddie, with, let's see. So, Christina, Christina, not a Christina. Go for it. No, I'm not a Christina. No. But, I mean, getting the chance to be a part of this club, and, I mean, what was it like, kind of, your journey meeting Rob and being a part of this club? What was it like when you got the call and he was like, hey, I want you a part of this? I mean, for me, it's, it's different. So I, I work for the state association in Georgia and, you know, the youth teams were, were a part of Georgia soccer. So that's how I met Rob. That's how I met Fernando. That's how I met everybody, Wes and whatnot, with with, uh, with the team. And then, you know, I'm, I'm about forming relationships and doing more than just what my job title is at the state, at the state association. That's how I was with the community events. Um and Rob and I just formed this relationship and, you know, I enjoyed the community that Georgia Impact have. I live, I live in, in Dunwoody, so I, I, I don't mind. I mean, Decatur is right around the corner. Sorry to mention them. But Decatur is right around the corner. They're another team that was here. Why, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Someone I, who lives in Decatur. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, like, I got a call 
this summer or, that, or uh, this spring from Decatur? And I was like, no. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm a part of Georgia Impact. And because of the relationship that I have with Rob and the vision and the community that has been here, I want to do nothing but help him and assist him with this because of everything that has been in, the support that he has for it. I have, in all the years that I've been doing this, you know, I, I played up until I was 25, and and I've been involved at all levels of club and youth and semi-pro, I've done all that. I have never met somebody like Rob who has been so invested in the women's game in any aspect that I've ever, ever been. The things that he does with the youth club, the things that he's doing here, and Atlanta has never had a pro team besides the beat. It's been a while since the beat have been around. And for him to get, and, and for Georgia Impact in this community to get that pro, um, I mean, I can't tell you how many years I've been saying, and I've only been in Atlanta for two years, but Atlanta's been a big market. Why is there no pro women's soccer in Atlanta? And now in 25, Rob has the opportunity to bring pro women's soccer back to the state of Georgia. And that is huge. I, like, I was a part of a generation that when I left college, the women's league folded. I didn't have an opportunity. If I wanted to play, I had to go overseas, which isn't for everybody. So I never had the opportunity in a community like this to play pro. You know, I grew up in Florida. I grew up in Tampa. That's a big market. But I'm, I've never had the opportunity to play pro. And for this community and for this state, to have that opportunity and Rob and, and this community bringing pro women's soccer to Georgia. I mean, when I saw that announcement, I was ecstatic because I can't tell you how many times, I mean, I probably said it to you when we were at tryouts. I'm like, why don't we have a pro team? Like, why, what, what's going on in Atlanta? Come on. But like this, th I mean, this is amazing. And it's it's something that I never got to experience because the league folded when I, when I was coming out of college. So for these girls that have these opportunities out of college, and then even now we're talking about youth to pro right away, you don't, college sometimes isn't an option anymore. So you going youth to pro and having this opportunity with Rob and, and the development of the pathway that we all talk about, being real and being here, it's amazing. So from one Christina to the other Christina. Yeah, I mean, that's hard to follow up because you just said all the, the great things. But she yes, stole your stuff. She, it's okay, no, 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 it's okay. She didn't steal. She she was wonderful. She yes. proliferated. Yes. 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 We have a like mind. GK for sure. Union. GK like Union all day long. We say that with our kids all day long. Anyways, but yeah, um, the opportunity. I mean, we keep coming back to the opportunity. I didn't have that opportunity either. Um, you know, coming up after college again, tears at the end of the season, and it's that's it. It's like, okay, what's next? And W the WPSL team that I played for. I'm from New York. Um, so we were the... No. You couldn't tell? No. <laughs> go Bills. There you I, knew, go. I knew I'd get a Go Bills. Let's go Buffalo. Let's go Buffalo, yeah. I know how that is. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not sure what they're doing in the draft right now, but we're just not going to talk about it. Ooh, Anyways. You don't want to know. Staying on, uh, on the good game here on, no. on soccer, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't, you know, that I was with that team for one summer, and then it was just kind of eh, whatever. And uh, yeah, just to not not have the opportunity to, to even continue my career um, after college was a disappointment. Um, but I did get to coach, and so the opportunity when Rob said last year, "Hey, do you want to be a part of this?" I was like, oh, "Yeah, sign me up." And then. Um, some life things got in the way for me. I got married, and so it all kind of just like went at the exact moment. But he did. He was so patient with me, and the whole club, everybody was so patient and let me in. You know, even towards the end of the season, I got to be a part of it when I could be, and that means the world to me. So, you know, it's not just oh, you can't be there for everything. Well, we're gonna shun you out. Like it's literally a family, and I couldn't be more thankful for that. Um, and to be a part of it as a coach, it helps to not or it helps to fill that void of not being able to play um, whenever I was younger, you know, and, and have this opportunity. So it's amazing to give back to these kids. I think our purpose as coaches, and you can see that kind of beaming out of all of us, is to give back to these players. Um, that's what it's all about. It's about them and how we can benefit them. So to be able to pour into them is a lot of fun. Now, apparently there was a trade involving Buffalo where you helped out Kansas City. I, it's just. I mean, listen. 
I can speak from everyone. At least you know it's you're not the Falcons. So let's let's not talk. Wow. About that. Wow. Drop that. If we one. really want to talk about it, I. I, yeah, I don't even know anymore. I think I've lost faith. All this, all this American football, Rob's faith. like, what are you guys talking about? You're like, huh? <laughs> how, about, how, how about we catch up with some players? All right, so Christina, Christina, not a Christina, and Rob, the head coach. Thanks a lot. Coaches, thanks for hanging out with us here. It's great to see George Impact. It's great to see you again. All right, we're going to tag out and get some players in here. Oh, good crowd, one-handed. You bet. We're asked, we're, uh, let's see, serving, uh, let's see, the players that you had on your list. All right, so let's see, one on each side, one on each side. So Maddie, Maddie get in the middle. I'll get in the middle. Maddie gets in the middle. Exactly. So uh, ladies, if you would introduce yourselves to everybody here, we have. Kennedy Vineyard. And you are from? Uh, Woodside, Georgia. Where do you want to school? Uh, Reinhardt. Reinhardt. I know Reinhardt up in the, the beautiful, bustling metropolis of Waleska. All right, go for it. <laughs> My name is Elena Bryan. I'm from Talking Rock, Georgia, and I'm going to the Citadel. My name is Scarlett Hershey. I'm from Canton, Georgia, and I'm going to Creek High School. Okay, so we've got one, we have one from each. When Georgia Impact came online, what was your first thought about, hey, I've really got to be a part of this? What were your first thoughts? It's like, I've really got to do this. Rob, I played for Rob for a really long time. So when they were like in the when they were creating it, um, they was like, I really want you to be on this team. Like, please just come try out. And I tried out. I made the team. And ever since then, I just played it. So I'm excited to come back for this season. What was it like last season for Um, it was a lot of fun. It was. It's a lot of hard work because you're playing with like some top tier players, but they really push you and it's just like a big family and it's just so much fun. You do a lot of good time around, but it's also you put in some effort and you grow a lot. So. And at the same time, it's, you know, part of what's going on here where it's home for a lot of players and a lot of folks that are local. Do you, do you feel that kind of responsibility? It's like, man, this is really big here, and I'm kind of representing my town, my people, all this kind of stuff? When it first started out, I didn't realize how big it was, and then I, like, stepped back, and I was like, oh, my God, this is a lot bigger than what I pictured this ever be. So it's really cool. All right, Maddie, go for it. Yeah, I mean, for both of you guys, I think has Georgia Impact kind of been at, like, a stepping stone for you guys to help you guys prepare to play collegiately but also preparing to play semi-pro and also now professional as you're moving on into the 2025 season oh yeah for sure like i i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for impact so yeah and now obviously since you're in high school what has it been like to get the chance to play with some of these players who have played collegiately what have you learned from some of them have they bestowed some advice some anything that they could give guidance to you going into high school and into college as well yeah, they're um, they're obviously like top tier players, and they just keep pushing me to do better and better every day because I want to be the best that I can. And playing with them is just improving my game so much. And when you guys found out that Georgia Impact would be going professional in 2025, what was your all of y'all's reaction? Like getting the chance to get that that notification, that phone call is like, oh my gosh, we're a part of a team that's going to now be one of the first women professional place of your sense to be. I mean, what, what was that like for you guys? Um, this is my first year playing, so as soon as I heard that, I, I knew I had to be on the team, and I brought, Coach Rob is my, uh, was my club coach, and so is Coach Wes, and so I texted him, and I was like, I know I want to play, so what do I got to do? And here I am. Well, it's the same for me. Coach Rob and Coach Wes are also my club coaches, and when I saw that, I was like, I've got to go play, because it's just an incredible experience. So let me ask over here. You got the news. I'm sure it was like a text chain or something where it ends up, or you were DMing each other or, or on the gram or the IG or the Insta, whatever you guys call it. We still days. text, John. It's not like we're using DMs. Okay. So <laughs> you text or you go on the IG or whatever, the gram. So you get the notification. Everybody's like, the word is spreading around that the idea is going pro. What were the converse conversations like on your end? You know, I just really didn't know what to do. I was just really excited for the club. And I just wanted to keep growing and growing and getting better every day. So it's really cool. <laughs> what do you think about what? Do they call them threads? 
do they, do they call the jerseys? And the, the they're, out well, they're kits. The kits and the they're unions. Kids, it's okay, so it's fine. All right, so <laughs> let's talk kits. <laughs> let's do a little kit talk. You, you got the jersey on. What do you think about the? What do you think about the new threads this year? The pink. I love the pink. It's very clean. It's nice material. I don't know. <laughs> most importantly, the pink. And you see, did you see the black jersey too? I haven't seen the black jersey yet. It's over at the other table, but then they took them away. Think of a black jersey, a black version of that. I love the pink. It's my favorite. What did y'all think about? I love pink and I love the black. One. I love the black one from last season, but we haven't seen the black or this this season's black. One. Maybe it was last season's black and they just did out. I don't know, but I like the. I really black. like the pink as well. In the black from last season, I'm really cool. So I'm excited to see that one. I like I like the pink. I feel like it gives a little bit more of like an accent when you're on the field. Like you'll. It's a really accent. I like it. Like it just. I, I just I love the pink as well. When y'all like when y'all unrevealed it, I was like I was like oh I was like okay I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go on there and get a little one because I really like it. I think it's really cool. I think it's great. Do you think of yourself even you know since you're a part of the community? Do you think of yourself as a, a role model or a representative for what's going on here in the growth of the sport, knowing everything that's going on with U.S. soccer and all this kind of stuff, and you get to be a part of it up here, where you've been making an impact, part in the punt? Do you think of yourself as a role model in any way? I'm starting to think of myself as a role model just because all of like these little girls are coming up and like asking to take pictures with me and they're like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so excited to do this when I'm older and like all this kind of stuff. Like they're just like they really like believe in me and so it makes me feel like kind of like accomplished. So I'm like, okay, now I gotta like put someone together and like show that like they can do it right in a few years. What about you guys over there? Um, yeah, the town that I come from, like, soccer's not that big, so... I, just I was going to say Talking Rock. I was trying to figure out... I've been to a lot of towns in Georgia. Where is Talking Rock? Pickens County. Okay. So it's a suburb of Jasper. Okay. Yeah, it's, a little, it's a little small town. No, it's, it's a suburb of Jasper. Is yeah, what I basically, kind of. I mean, but sports are not, like, a big thing in last school. Kind of, but soccer, like, pro soccer is not a big thing at all. It's not even looked, looked to, towards, like... Nobody really wants to play, so I started going there my sophomore year, Pickens High School my sophomore year, and I played, and a lot of girls didn't really know, like, they just played for fun, but then the next year, when I, like, I feel like I brought soccer to my community a little bit, because a lot of, a lot of our four girls started playing on the team, they started coming to me and asked, like, oh, how do I do this? I know some girls even started playing club because I'd started playing. Or I'd been playing, but I told them about it, and I was like, yeah, that's where I came from. And so it just kind of came on like that. And I got all these, like, like these little girls coming up and taking pictures and all these ones DMing me on Instagram and tagging me. And I think it's cool. Like, I'm, like, like being a role model for a little girl that wants to, that comes up to me and tells me she wants to be me one day. Like, that just, like, I enjoy that, and I think that's really, like, sweet. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on the because I feel like, especially with the development of soccer, uh, women's soccer especially, moving forward with the She Believes Cup, what was it like to have a competition like that here and getting the chance to be a part of something where you get to help spread more awareness about women's soccer and how important it is and how women and girls can compete in this really competitive sport and be great at it and just kind of being overshadowed a little bit but getting the chance to really see a breakout I mean how's it been like for y'all to get the, the chance to see that well growing up I never had like I always had like just parents sitting on the sidelines and like, going to like play for my high school games it was just all these parents never really had any like friends or fans and then um last season when we started there were like so many fans they would bring out like the pink cannons like full of powder and like they would do it before every half and like they were just always cheering like my or my friends and family would bring out like fat heads and like it was it was really cool and so just like watching us like kind of grow and like seeing the community really start to like grow women's soccer is something that i want to do because i feel like we're not appreciated enough and so I love seeing the girls. I mean, I, I watched the games last season and just the whole other crowd and 
the energy that they brought for the players that played and how they brought them up and made them excited to be there. I just feel like that's very important, and I feel like girls' soccer is really coming back, and it's like becoming just as important as any other sport. We went to all the games last year as well, and I don't think there's ever a moment where the crowd wasn't cheering. It was just amazing to see like the atmosphere for like women's soccer. So. You mentioned the cannons. I have to ask, is there a supporter section? And if it is, what what's the name of the supporter section? You know, I'm not too sure what like their like little section is, but it was like a smaller group of fans that would go down to like right behind our goal for the first half, or like kind of near it but on the side, and they would just shoot out the cannons. And there was one time when they did it kind of late. And it was like after we had already kicked off, and I'm not playing right back, and it was one of the games where I was starting, and like I was like trying to breathe, and I was breathing in all of this like chalk or powder or whatever it is, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so, but it, it was so funny. So please watch the cannons before kickoff. Yes. Before this is the kickoff. public service announcement. Hey, yes. make sure this season, don't do that. Yes. We're going to tag out, bring in some more. Thanks a lot for yes, hanging out with us. Looking so forward much. to 25. Thanks for hanging out. Great to see all of you. All right, shift number two. Do we have a second shift of folks that were coming in? I believe we do. We got more coming? All right. See, I see how this works. Everybody's going to go hang out with Maddie. I know how this works. What can I say? I'm just, I'm cool like that. Yes, you are. All right, shift, shift number two, introductions. Go ahead. I'm Ava Richards, and I go to Sequoia High School, and I'm from Canton, Georgia. I'm Emily Cooper, I'm from Rome, Georgia, and I go to Rome High School. I'm Nancy Richards, I'm from Woodstock, Georgia, and I go to Fellowship Christian High School. So let's see, all right, it's uh, Chiefs, Wolves, Paladins. There we go. The fact you weren't able to name all that off, like, the top of your head. <laughs> I don't even remember like what I did yesterday. I don't either. I, see, I remember high school mascots, but remembering what I did yesterday is a problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like the the little like things you remember. Yeah, the little the like okay. the, yeah, the, the 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 obscure stuff I remember. Day to day, like where I put my car keys, that's a problem. Okay. When Georgia Impact came online in your in your orbit and you got the chance to hop on and be a part of it, what was your initial thoughts? A about Georgia Impact and B, what's it been like for you? Um, well, I've played at Georgia Impact, like, since I've moved to Georgia for, like, 10 years now. And so when I saw that they had a semi-pro team, I was like, I want to be on it. I want to be a part of it. So, yeah. so you're a part of it now, not over there. Yeah, that's the same thing of y'all. What, what, when did it first become on your radar? When did you know, like, I need to be a part of this club? Um, when it first became, um, uh, like, wait, are you talking about Debbie Kisso or the when did you first see like Georgia Impact, and when did you know that you wanted to be a part of that club? So I used to play for a club in Rome, um, and when I moved with Fernando because he's been my coach since um, I started playing. Um, and once he um, was moving, I noticed that it was going to be a better environment, and it was going to be a great opportunity for me. Um, so I made the move with him, and it's been amazing. And um, yeah, and when I saw that there's going to be a WPSL team, I was just like, yeah, that's going to be a great opportunity for me to play with uh, my current college players um, to help me in my pathway to hopefully playing college. Um, I also have been at Georgia Impact for a long time now, probably around 10 years too. And so it's, it's really been an incredible environment. And we have a group of girls that's been like, together since the very beginning and also when they came out with the WPSL team and we as like a group of quite a few of us decided that we we're going to try it out and it's been an incredible environment since. So for y'all who've like been a part of Georgia Impact for a long time and going through the development process, what was it like to kind of watch your growth as it was when you were playing from a little bit younger in Georgia Impact now being a part of this semi-professional club? It's just, it's very inspirational to watch um, all the older girls and just think that now I am one of those older girls and think back of when I was one of those younger girls and I was looking up at like my age now and I was like, wow, um, like that's she's so, she's so cool and old and now I'm one of those people. 
So I think it's just like now I get to be one of those role models, role models and inspirational people for them and all the other people. Um, it's it's funny to me because like you never really see how much you've grown until like you're actually just looking back on it. And so I remember like first like being on the academy team at Georgia Impact and like being on the career team and having the goal to work my way up to the top. And then finally being here and looking back and seeing the journey. It's it's really cool. How about over here? What about for you? Um yeah, so similar thing. Um I was just like talking in the car with my parents actually on the way here about how like just how much I miss like being young and like just having so much fun with it. But it's also like it's just so cool to see how far I've come. And like I remember when I was still super little playing up with the older girls and being like, Oh, this is kind of intimidating, you know, they're so much bigger than me, playing on the same team with them, you know, being scared and like heavily said, now I'm here and I'm just like, wow, now I'm in their shoes and now there's younger people looking up at me. So You mentioned the whole role model thing and how you're that way you know, about being able to sit there and impact partner prime once again the, the younger players now there's this idea of pro coming up around the corner and i see, I see heads nodding already they're like yeah pro all right yeah we're gonna pro the idea of that once again here in the southeast where soccer has taken off you know what's it like to see fifty thousand at Mercedes Benz with the, the women's national team being able to be a part of something pro here? What's it been like to be a part of that upward mobility? I mean, ever since I was little, I've looked up to the U.S. women's national team, and it's just like a dream come true to be honest. Like, yeah. <laughs> who who is who's the poster on your wall? Who are the who are the players that you sit there and you look at? Um, probably the most popular one, Alex Morgan. You know. Um, yeah. Alex Morgan on the wall. What about over there? What about on that sofa? Who's on your wall and what's it like to, to see this idea of going pro? Well, I always looked up to Carly Lloyd and Julie Ertz. Um, wear the, do you wear the headband like Julie Ertz do? No. I, I mean, I used to, but I kind of grew out of it. Um, but kind of going on to an Avis thing, it's kind of always been a dream to play at this level and um, even like obviously the pro level. Um, so now that this is an this has become an opportunity for me, it's just it's great. Yeah, for me I also like I always saw Alex Morgan and also Cleo Miller. And it was just like incredible to think of like how I could ever make it that far. And so with like the pro team, I always not known really how I could be like upward mobility in women's soccer. There weren't many pathways and many options, and so that's why like, the idea of having a protein this close to home is incredible because it just opens up a whole new load of opportunities. Well, I mean, I have to ask, you know, all y'all high school, state championships right now, how has it been? Have y'all been keeping up with some of it? What's been going on with all that? Um, well, so we thought Sequoia was going to do really well this season, but unfortunately we didn't make it to playoffs. Um, but I'm looking forward to next season, um, and I think next season's going to be our year, especially it being my senior year, so I really want to make the most of it. Let's see how this is going. You're talking about the clubs. Go for it. Um, well, I play in their region, um, and my team... We did not do too well. Actually, uh, we, did, we did the Sonorable game in Sonorable on the network. Oh my actually. gosh, I think we did. Yeah. Yes, I know, because I remember you said it, and I was, like, I was like, they definitely won the match that we did. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, we were in Sonorable, called your match on the network. Yeah. yeah. Well, we won that one. That's one of the games we won. Um, but yeah, so we did not make the playoffs, but like we next year. Um, I've been blessed with Celestial Christian School and for such a small two-way school. We have a really incredible pool of players, like three people going D1, like UGA and Liberty. And so right now we're in our second round of playoffs. It's been going strong so far, and we're hoping to get to the finals. Your offense has been incredible. I mean, you guys have been putting up a lot of goals in the, in the season. I, I was looking at the, the first round. Was it 14 in the first round? It was 14, yes. And then 11, just the second round yesterday. 
That's crazy. Wait, what when when stuff? Uh, can, can you bring some of that fellowship, palette and mojo over here to the impact this season? Can you can you bring some of that magic over here? I can try. I mean, it's not really it's not me. I'm uh, stuck in the back. Oh, well, no, I'm just saying, bring the magic over about winning big margins and everything. Just bring the magic over. I can't make any promises. Oh come on! I can there you go. So now my last one for y'all. I mean. All of y'all are in the same region. What is it like when you guys are playing for your high school team to kind of go up against each other a little bit? Is there, is there like a like a, a trade? Like if we win, you know, who gets bragging rights? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Talk at the same time. I want to hear yeah. that. I think the, game, the games against teammates are like the most fun ones because it's so fun. Like I played at Emily's four up top, so I love like going head to head against her, you know? And actually, in the Rome game, Emily scored in like the first uh -oh. moment, yeah, 10 minutes, and I was like, oh gosh, like, what's going on here? And so then it was more motivation, and I'm like, do you want to win? <laughs> <laughs> Like, like April said, it is it's so much more fun playing against um, my teammates because it's it's almost, it's not like more relaxing, but it's almost more relaxing. You know, you're just like having fun and you're just like, oh, I'm playing against my teammate. Um, and you just try your absolute best and just like do your best against them. I don't know. It's I, know, I know what her, I know what her first move is to try to stick into a tackle. I'm going to go the other way. I see how this is. It's like defense versus offense. I know what she's thinking. I'm going to do the exact opposite. You get to watch all of this, right? You know, do you have any? Uh, do you have any uh, region opponents on the team, or do you just kind of get to watch and sit there and go ha 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 ha? Yeah, I guess a little bit. I can. I don't get to play um, them a lot, but I watch them when I do. We actually got to play River Ridge this season, which was fun. Ooh. And so, like to know people, and then also to have the inside scoop on kind of what kind of player they are and where those swings would be, that's also another pro to it. I, I just I have this sense of coaches saying, like, okay, can you please tell me what's going on here? What What is she like? Is it what is she like? We we need the intel. How do we defend against that individual? Am I wrong? No, I mean that's happens behind the scenes, so you're not really supposed to know, but. <laughs> We're getting all the skinny about defending against other high school when when, when you got a when you got a club and you got folks with rival schools. This is what it's like. You're the coaches a are like the coaches are like. Yeah, we need a little help here in defense. How do we defend against that? You're digging a little too far. You're digging a little too far. They can't this this look when the when the microphones are off, this conversation never happened except on social media, where this will be on maybe as a podcast later or something. Like that. No one will know this happened. Except maybe later. Just we'll find it tomorrow. <laughs> Guys, thanks for coming on. It's great to see you. Looking forward to Oh, what do you think of the jersey? Oh, I love them. Like um, Kennedy was saying, except I love the pink. Um, one of my favorite colors. So, yeah, I love them. Jersey? What do you think? I love pink, too. Um, and they're just really light. Like, the material is so amazing. Uh, it's a lot different than my high school jersey, which is thicker. So this is, this is nice. Three for three? Yeah, I also, I love the jersey, and also, like, with the pink, I think it's also, like, it's something different, because not many teams have, like, a bright color like this, and it is, like, white, or black, or red, or something like that, so having something different or memorable is really cool. Very cool. Y'all, thanks for coming in and hanging out here on the, uh, the interview sofas as we get ready for Impact here in 2024. Thanks a lot, y'all. <laughs> Sequoia Rome Fellowship Christian. That was very cool. Yeah. Do we have a round three? Sounds like a request. We're having a little chain over here. They're, 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 they're just, they want it. <laughs> so for those who are just listening and hanging out, please introduce yourself to the entire panel. My name is Haley. <laughs> Haley. Just Haley. Kind of like Madonna. But no, no, no one can top Madonna. Uh, my last name is Swinson, Haley Swinson. I was going to say, like, Tiger. It's like it's Haley and Tiger. Like Madonna. It's like just the one name. I see how, the, I see how this goes. One name. Everybody, it's like, that's how this is. One name, Haley. All right. What about over here on your sofa? Charlie. 
<laughs> there you go. That's Charlie. So it's Haley over here and Charlie over well, there. See, Charlie is a fellow um, Kennesaw State. So, Let's who, go. so, so hootie who for you? So hootie who, baby? Hootie who for you? Let's go, y'all. Let's go. Listen, you, you don't want to go to war with the owls, all I'm saying. You don't. Don't let the owls get hot. Don't let the owls get hot. Don't. Are, Watch are, out. Are you going to let the two of them get away with this? You know what? I, I, this is my teammate right here, so I'm for her. <laughs> I, 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 I never watched the like, kids all game, but I, I, I'll say who to who. Yes. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. We gotta love. Okay, the owls. so you two owls, go ahead and lead off. What's on your mind? Yeah, I mean, obviously you play in college as well. So coming into the semi professional, how has college kind of helped ease into that a little bit? But I know that you played for Georgia Impact for a little bit as well. So how has it been, vice versa, how Georgia Impact has helped you in college as well? Um, I think playing for Impact was such a great experience, and I'm so excited to do it again. Um, play for impact, it's such a higher level than I expected, and really like the team chemistry and the bonds that we all have helped us really play well together. Um, it really prepared me for college because I was able to get that game experience, and so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the impact. So, Haley, how did you get to? When this came across your radar, how, how did you how did you find out about it? What's it been like for you? Wow, that is a great question. Um, I the Kennesaw State folks—they're off and gone. They're 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 gone. We can't get them back. Yeah, no. For me, I haven't played soccer in twelve years, and um, I wanted to play professional soccer. And out of nowhere, literally, as something like reignited in my heart, and I just began to pray and ask God. Oh, do you want me to do this? So started training, found out there was a tryout, and I'm here. So that, that's a crazy story, but that, that is a real story. So, 12 yeah. years, huh? It's been 12 years. What was that first day back like? <laughs> the first day back is like anybody's first day back going to the gym. Um, <laughs> you have to teach yourself. I had to learn how to take a soccer ball again. I didn't even know how to dribble or... Um, you're sore, is what I'm trying to say. You're sore. Ice bath. I did the, I did the, the AYSL for US soccer oh back when the TV was here. And I mean, I hadn't kicked a soccer ball in like, since like, I was like 12 or 13. And I, I came home the next day and I was like, wow. Like, I, I was, I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and give Haley the microphone and let the three of you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not leaving. No, you, you guys are off and running. I'm just going to be kicking back and listen to the three of you guys talk. You're off and running here. <laughs> Haley's you're just, being left over. Haley's just going to jump this. Well, no, if you're going to jump to that sofa, you got to take this microphone with you. I mean, I guess I'll ask both of y'all. I mean, being in the goalkeeper position, what is one thing that you've learned from each other as you guys have kind of learned and been teammates for a little bit? Oh, wow. Well, actually... We're just teammates right now, but uh -oh. I've actually only met her one year time before this. <laughs> so still, still brand new, still brand new. So, as I said, I I'm going to hand place. Haley the microphone, and the three of you can just keep running. Here, Haley, take the microphone. Okay. We've lost control of the guests in the interview pit. We wouldn't have it any other way, but we've lost control of the interviewees and one of the interviewers. <laughs> I'm offended. Okay, listen. I'm having a good time here. <laughs> so what were you doing in the 12 years before you decided to, to hop back in? Yeah, I get the opportunity to work at a church. So it's in Atlanta. It's called Passion City Church. And I got to change my life when I was in college. And um, yeah, I, I played for a long time for my own glory. It's my own fame. I wanted all the recognition. And uh, this go around, I'm like, God, I want to play for you. I want the world to know that you're real, that you really stand on this stage. Yeah, what I did in the middle of the 12 years was I, I just worked. I worked at the church um, and get a big part of my ministry too, uh, which these people are living. What's it like to have that kind of support? I mean, when, when you're talking about your your journey. And then you're explaining what's going on, and then you have what a dozen folks just 
open their hearts and, and reinforce your decisions and everything that you've done to get to here. What's it like to hear that? Yeah, it's, over, it's overwhelming. Um, but it's the kindest thing to have people in your life that truly love you and support you. They want to drive two hours to show up, to show you that they love you and support you. But uh, yeah, it's, it's overwhelming. It's amazing. Two hours? With them? A lot of people drive like two hours. From, what, from where? They're from uh, like Atlanta, the other parts of Atlanta, different places. Um, they don't even know where Canton existed until now, but they're about to know. She's going to put Canton on the map wearing a different colored jersey. I see how this works. The Atlanta traffic is not good. Like, no. I mean, we just broke Pencil, so it wasn't that bad, So Actually, you guys you guys are just like four miles away, right? It took you two hours to get here? You, I mean, going into next season for the Owls, getting the chance to kind of play there, viewing Georgia Impact this summer, and then going into the college scene back again, what are you hoping to bring back in from Georgia Impact coming back and playing for Kennesaw State? I just really hope that I can bring the culture. I know I always say this, but the team chemistry and the bonds that all of us had was just amazing. Like that's why I think we were so successful within our first year, and that's what I hope to bring to kind of all really to just help everyone become 20 times closer and be able to play like we're family rather than just people from different parts of the country that come and play at one school or one family. When you started playing, did you play in America a lot? What was the, what was the soccer community like in, in South Georgia? Did you, uh, now, did you go to a, did you go to a America Center or where did you? Okay, so you went to America Center. What was the soccer environment like down there? Because I mean, it a long time ago it was America's High and Sumter County Rangers, and then they're like, okay, we're going to merge the two schools and be America Sumter, and we're just going to be one entity going forward. What was, when you started, what was soccer like there in America's, whether it's Georgia Southwestern, America Central, what was the soccer, what was the soccer vibe like? Yes, um, you gonna be honest, it's kind of like kickball. Not a lot of people played or even knew the game and didn't know really what to do um, with it. And so, uh, yeah, I had to travel like an hour and a half outside of my city to go like in my team uh, that was, other than a rec team, but it's a small town vibe. And that was why I wanted that. So you traveled 90 minutes away from Americas to play the sport. Where did you travel to from Americas to go play? Yeah, my first, uh, my club team was in Albany, Georgia. My second club team was in Columbus, Georgia. Um, and then I played in Tipton uh, as well. That's a lot of miles. It's a lot of miles, but my parents did it. <laughs> so props to them. Any moms out there, dads, props to y'all. So what's it like to be able to have an impact 12 years later this time around? Yeah, I think it's it's an honor uh, to get to be teammates. Um, even though me and Charlie just met, just excited for to get to be on a team that's accomplishing things bigger than my own self. I think when you're a part of something that's doing things bigger than your own self, it's just a joy and an honor to be a part of. And the coaches are amazing. Excited to just learn, grow, and be a part of the family. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, and I mean, I'll ask both of y'all this question. I mean, Georgia Impact, semi-professional, 2025. You guys are going full pro. What is it like to hear that and to be a part of something like this and getting the chance to be one of the first professional women's soccer programs in Georgia since the Atlanta Beat? Honestly, it's just so amazing what one season, you know, the season last summer but it really put Canton on the map and especially Georgia Impact and I'm just so happy to hear that you know younger younger women are thinking that you know playing professional is, is not out of reach you can really do it against like local too I just I really think it's amazing yeah no I echo what, what she said I think it's truly incredible to 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 imagine myself as a young kid looking at this team and saying, no, one day I can do that. And it's available and it's accessible for kids and they can almost see themselves in us. And so it's really, really cool for Canton, but for Georgia, like you said, like, it's crazy. It's, 
Do they give you one of the pink jerseys? I know that you get to wear a different color, but do you get a pink one to go you know, to hang up someplace? Do you get pink? This is a question for Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's been put on notice. Yeah, Rob has been put on <laughs> uni blast. I think is what we're calling it. Like, and so, yeah. do I have a pink one? Please hold. I don't know. Do you uh, have a pink one? Oh gosh. He, does he have a pink one? Oh, do we? Do you have a pink one? I don't know if I have a pink one. Charlie, I don't think I do. You think we should get her a pink if one? If I have a pink one, then I should have a pink one. If you have a pink one, I agree. We should give everybody pink. <laughs> Everyone should get pink ones. Oh, okay. Wait, we got it pulled out. Oh, we got. One. We got one of the black jerseys. Nice. I like it. I like it. I, oh, please. Listen. Let's go. Let's do it. No, because I like the pink. I like the blue, too. The blue's nice. Yeah, we also have green, but I'm not too fond of that one. I think both Haley and I can agree we both look better in blue. Okay. So, I've asked about second chapters, or next chapters, or whatever, however you want to phrase it. The whole role model thing, we've talked about that a little bit, you know, with other younger players. You know, now you having twelve years away, coming back for a second chapter, your life experiences probably far exceed ninety-nine point nine percent of the folks here involved with the club. When it comes to off the field being a mentor, has that crossed your mind or how much has it crossed your mind? Obviously you get to be out there and you get to to be there with younger players and learn from them in different ways. What about as an off the field mentor and getting to learn from younger players and additionally take your knowledge, not just on the field, but off the field. Have you thought about those kinds of things and the impact that that might have? Yeah, I, I think it's it's really important to be the same person no matter where, where we're at, whether it's on the field or off the field. And I think it's, a, it's just a joy to get to have people uh, that are same age um, as coaches leading into me, but to be able to pour into to younger people, I think uh, for me, it's it's something where you're like, I want to live a life that's worthy of being modeling. And I think for me, that's like, if I have a life that looks anything like Jesus, which I, I fall short of that all the time. But if my life can keep looking like his, then that's what I'll model. And I hope to, to be a leader in that room. I mean, I'll ask the same thing of you being a role model and being being one of the players here that's in college and playing at a Division One level. How what is it like to be a role model to a lot of these younger players who are striving to be a collegiate athlete anymore? Honestly, it just it feels so amazing because I remember when I first started playing soccer. You know, you look up to people like Hope Solo, who I never got a chance to talk to. But it's nice that, you know, younger kids can come and talk to me, talk to Haley, get advice, you know. I just think it's amazing, and I really enjoy having Haley because she, she, honestly, she's a role model for me as well. Being, you know, 12 years not playing, right? And then coming back, and then here you are. Love you for yourself. GK Union. Wonder Twin Powers activate. Same yeah, so so that's a, that's going to be yes. Yeah, so, well, that's well. Yeah, so it's going to be an impact rule this year that you're going to play with two keepers. I see how this. Works. I like it. I like it. So it's going to be like twelve v eleven, but it's going to be like don't pay no attention to the second keeper. It actually it's it, they're they're one and the same person. Yes. <laughs> Well, guys, it's great to see you. Thanks for uh, being up here on the, the interview couches. I'm looking forward to seeing you this season in WPSL. Thanks for hanging out. It's your hoodie over there. Listen, the Owls are taking over, and y'all ain't ready for it. And GK Union. It's, we've had two rounds of GK Union here on the sofa. Don't let the Owls get hot. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. Watch out. I, I'm glad you know the. I'm glad you know the nicknames and all of the sayings. Well, I, I would hope I do. I yeah. go there. You yeah, know? you do. I'm about to graduate. From there too, you know? Yeah, it's uh, Maddie Cruz. I'm John Nelson. Soccer down here. Soccer down here. Daily Radio and the SDH Network. Uh, we are in the heat of our high school season yes. with the playoffs. Quarterfinals and semifinals next week. You can listen to us on the network, and uh, we'll let you know how that. Uh, if you want to know how to listen? You can go to our Mixler channel. You can go to soccerdownhere.net 
answer all those kinds of questions. And we'll have this. We'll have a lot of high school. We've got Atlanta United 2 on Sunday afternoon, all the different programming, all the appearances, and all that kind of stuff. Do we get do we get another round of folks? Do we have more folks or are we good? good? Everybody's going to enjoy the rest of their Friday yes. evening. So we want to thank everybody here at Reformation. You guys have been great. It's always great to come up here and visit. And uh, thanks for letting us come and be a uh, part of things here on the interview couches. Looking forward to the Georgia Impact season here in 2024. Once again, thanks to the staff, Reformation. Thanks to the coaching staff. Well, it's good to see you again. Don't be a stranger. You have a special dispensation. You have golden ticket status. Anytime you want to crash in the show to talk about stuff, you can, especially in that accent from Atala, Alabama. We know what that's all about. Very good. Thanks for our friends from the city of Canton, Northside Hospital. George Impact, looking forward to 2024. Thanks for sharing all great stories. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight, everybody.